Hello lovely people of the internet. Welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Joe Basham and I have been working and living in London for the past three years studying cosmetic science. Um, so I really want to provide consumers with that knowledge, that scientific knowledge uh, that is easy to understand that you can use when you're shopping for your cosmetics, learning how they work and what ingredients and what prices should you really be paying for your skincare products. So I have been working for the past year in a skincare company. I completed a diploma um, in professional studies, which is basically me learning how the cosmetics companies work, how the industry works as a whole, and really getting to grips with how I work in a scientific environment. So probably just like you guys, I watch a huge amount of YouTube. And uh, there are people that I really like on YouTube. There are people I kind of slightly dislike on YouTube, without naming names. Um, some people tend to talk about ingredients and products and how they work with not necessarily as much scientific basis behind it or un even understanding as to how it works before talking about ingredients. Things like silicones, parabens, sulfates have all come under a huge amount of fire recently um, and I don't necessarily think all those ingredients are that bad. In further videos I will explain my kind of thoughts behind them and why these rumours have started. So I've also spent the last year researching um, how consumers understand cosmetics. It's just as well for me to relate to an inky list on the back of a product and say, oh, okay, that product might be quite nice or I wouldn't touch that with a barge pole. But it's quite hard for me to kind of understand how consumers would look at that inky list. And actually from research I've conducted, less than 20% of the population around the world in different major countries understand how to read an inky list and the meaning behind it and being able to really kind of um, understand more how their skincare products work and what is in them. So for those of you who don't know what an inky list is, um, it is the ingredients list on the back or on the carton or on the product itself. Um, this one here is one of my favourite products, Natural Moisturising Factors. This is from The Ordinary, one of my favourite companies actually. And they have got their inky list just here on the side of this carton. And actually some products, not this one entirely, but some products also have this on the product itself. Uh, now this one is actually just on the carton. And what I would advise is whenever you buy any cosmetic product, please keep the carton or please keep a copy of the inky list, whether it is online or whether it's on the carton, whether it's on the product itself, make sure you've got easy access to that. Um, I'm always open to answering any questions you guys have got about products or ingredients or why things are used, what companies are doing with them. So guys, just remember to keep hold of either the box or the packaging or the link as to where you found the product so you can find this inky list here. This is basically your fountain of knowledge. Um, I would love to do a video soon on how to actually read your inky list and what the ingredients inside your product are doing. Um, so please do remember to have easy access to that. So this video, I really wanted to talk a little bit more about the structure of the skin. Uh, the basic understanding of how the skin works, where everything is, and when you're applying your cosmetic products, what they're doing and how they're working, and in what layers of the skin are they working. So there are three primary layers of the skin. Um, the two we concentrate on most are the epidermis and the dermis. You also have the subcutaneous layer, which is just below that as well, keeps everything attached. It's pretty much like our skin's anchor. Um, now, if we take a look at the epidermis, which is our top layer, what you can see is the top layer of that epidermis is called the stratum corneum. Now, this layer is typically dead skin cells which are rusty, crusty, useless, and are going to fall off pretty soon. Um, so this is not much use to us. When you're using your AHAs, which helps to loosen dead skin cells, you're effectively removing this top layer of skin, which is showing a nice smooth layer underneath, um, making it look nice and smooth and clear and soft. So the epidermis is kind of where it's all going on for the skin, um, in terms of cosmetics anyway. In Europe, cosmetics actually classify as products that do not work in the dermis, which is this lower layer of the skin. So most of your cosmetics, 
pretty much all of them are working on the epidermis to help moisturize, hydrate, um, and also have a deeper effects as well, which are caused by actives. I'll look into those in a little bit more detail in further videos. Uh, but the epidermis really is the fountain of where everything is happening um, in terms of what you can see on the surface. Um, on top of the epidermis, you actually have the barrier function as well. And the barrier function is actually um, made up of sebum. Now in our skin, we have sebum glands, which secrete sebum on a daily basis. Um, and actually the amount that we secrete of sebum fluctuates daily. Um, so we actually find that in the night time, um, the sebum levels are a little bit lower and we tend to find that the skin at night loses more water than during the day because we have higher sebum levels in the afternoon so during the daytime we retain more moisture. Now this barrier function is key to enable the skin to be hydrated and plump and firm and moisturised um, and this really is the key area of how a moisturiser works. Um, it works in two different ways, but this barrier function is the layer that you have on top of your skin that you really want there to keep the moisture in and it's fundamental to any cosmetic product. Um, now when we look further down at the dermis, the dermis is really kind of the steel shaft behind the whole of the skin. It holds everything up. It is that scaffolding that really provides support to the skin. Um, and as you can probably see from the diagram on the screen right now, what you see is the connection between the epidermis and the dermis is actually quite curvy. You get a little bit of a wave in it. And what holds this in place is the collagen fibres. Um, you also have elastin fibres inside this layer of the skin as well, which helps the skin to be stretchy and pliable. But collagen really does provide that building block and holding the skin up and making it firm. Um, as we age, this collagen and elastin decreases. So the decrease in collagen um, ca can be shown by actually this wavy layer in between the dermis and the epidermis becoming a little bit more flatter. And on the contrary, what happens to that is the epidermis, which is our top layer of skin, becomes a little bit more wavy. And this is why we get um, wrinkles and sagging and just general drooping of the skin. So what we find in both the dermis and the epidermis is hyaluronic acid and you also find to some levels lactic acid as well. Both of these molecules help to keep the skin hydrated. You probably heard about hyaluronic acid in skincare products, it's now become somewhat of a fundamental ingredient and you've also probably heard claims that hyaluronic acid can hold up to a thousand times its weight in water. Um, this is true and actually helps to keep the skin retaining that moisture and plump and providing all of the benefits that we say, see throughout the day. Lactic acid also provides this um, hydration as well, but also helps to stabilise the pH of the skin as well. The skin pH can range anything between 4 and 5. Um, and generally, actually, what is found, the skin does prefer to be more on the acidic side, around about 4 to 4.5. And what we find is the use of cosmetic products, which are generally slightly higher, around about 7, increase the pH of the skin. Because we are using so many of these products, that actually what we find is the skin is generally around about pH 5 to 5.5, because using these products is constantly altering the pH of our skin. And the pH of our skin, which is how acidic or alkali is, is key, again, to protecting it and providing a home for the kind of fourth layer of protection of our skin, which I haven't yet come to talk about. Okay, so on top of the skin, it's not technically a layer of the skin, but I'm going to classify it as one because I feel that it is just as important. On top of our skin, we have got millions upon millions of bacteria. It's estimated that there are around 10 bacteria for every one skin cell on our body, which is an enormous number. So this fourth layer of the skin is another key area to providing um, real support for the skin and also protection. It's not something you really ever hear people talking about, and that's because science is only really starting to understand how it's working and, and actually what benefits it provides to the skin. We have known about bacteria in our gut for a long time now and it's well established that you need to have healthy bacteria to ensure that your gut is healthy. 
But what we don't really know about so much is the bacteria on our skin. And this really has been something really fascinating that I've been researching this past year, is the bacteria on top of our skin, they help to boost the skin's immune system to help protect against pathogens. And actually what you find is that the huge majority of bacteria on our skin are healthy bacteria. They are providing positive relationships with our skin. It's almost a synergistic effect. We provide a home for our bacteria and in turn, the bacteria actually help to protect against bad bacteria that our skin doesn't need, that could cause infection, that could cause all sorts of other issues. Um, but these bacteria that are present on our skin help to fight off other bad bacteria by producing antimicrobial agents. They also help to boost the skin's immune response to other bacteria. Um, and we use hand sanitizer on our hands. We constantly wash our skin. We are constantly attacking these bacteria, destroying them, trying to get rid of them because our thought is bacteria are bad. Um, quite the contrary, bacteria are crucial to every part of our body, including our skin. So I hope you now have a little bit more of an understanding of how the skin is structured. Um, in further videos, I will be referring to the structure of the skin and where the products and the ingredients are working. So this is kind of your first step of understanding more in-depth knowledge about how your skin works. Um, please remember this is my first video, so do give it a thumbs up. Don't be too harsh and please subscribe to the channel uh, for more factual information about cosmetic products. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.